One of the handles for a lid for one of my wife's pots or pans broke when it hit the floor and you can't buy replacements for those anymore. At least not one that would work for this particular situation. So I got some of these knobs. These are about two inches in diameter. I believe they're a maple, about an inch thick. And I want to put a threaded metal insert in these so they will last longer. The knob is two inches in diameter. I drilled a two and one sixteenth inch hole. And then it has a little bit of curvature to it. So I drilled an inch and a half hole. Without that second hole, if that was in the bottom of that, it would just rock around. Put it down in there. Now it's quite firm. I took another piece of scrap wood and I drilled a one inch hole in there. It just goes around that. This top piece of plywood is just engaging with the curvature of this knob or handle here and pushing down on it. So if that was still loose, I'd just put a little piece of cloth or paper towel, something to add a little thickness in there so that that would hold that firmly. And that will hold that firmly so I can redrill this hole for a threaded metal insert. These are 1032 threaded inserts, quite heavy duty, about 7 16 outside diameter. I need to drill a 3 8 inch hole, one half inch deep to install these. I've centered the bit on my drill press. The first one I drilled the handle was turning a little bit in this holding jig, so I put a little bit of paper towel under and on top of that, and hopefully that won't turn when I go to install the metal insert. I'm going to try vacuum infusion of the wood in these handles. I've already got the brass inserts installed. I'm going to put these in the stainless container. The handles are in there with the metal inserts facing upward, so any air that's in those holes that I drilled will find its way out and the resin can find its way in. I have a cap from a spray can. I've drilled some holes in here so any liquid can get in and can also drain out. There's a lead weight in the center of that spray can lid. And I set that on top of those handles to keep them from floating to the surface of the resin. Some people use cactus juice. This is stick fast. It's another brand of stabilizing resin. I've already mixed it. And I'm going to pour just enough in here to cover the wood and my lead weight is keeping those handles from floating. Put that in there. Put the lid on. Turn on the pump, see what happens. You can see the foam in there as the air comes out of that wood. I'm down to about 20 inches of vacuum.
as luck would have it, I went to zoom in on this and my camera malfunctioned. The vacuum is holding at 28 inches of mercury. The bubbles are still coming out of the wood and it's been about 15 minutes since the vacuum was first applied. So this will continue for quite some time. I'm not in any hurry, so I'm going to wait until the last bubble comes out. It really is interesting to see how much foam comes out of those three small wood handles. There's a lot of air volume in there. One hour later and the bubbles are still coming out. That sat there and held steady a little over 28 inches on the gauge. Then I turned on the vacuum pump again just for the heck of it and I got quite an increase in the number of bubbles. So it's, it's still pulling the air out of that wood and a lot of it. Okay, Ron's been baking. That's pretty scary. Open these up and see what we got. I took these out and dried them with a paper towel, wrapped them in some aluminum foil. And you're doing that so that when this stuff oozes back out of the wood, it doesn't drip on the inside of your oven, uh, more appropriately on the inside of my wife's oven. And I did this while she wasn't home. It didn't smell too bad. At least I didn't think it smelled too bad. We'll get her vote when she returns. So now I'll clean this up on the lathe and see what it looks like. These were in the resin. Bubbles were coming out for well over six hours under vacuum overnight. I released the vacuum this morning and it sat in there for oh, another four or five hours before I took it out. I took these out and I wiped them off with a paper towel. These were super saturated with this resin. So much so that after I wiped them off dry, if I would sit it down like that, pick it up in about a minute, the resin was oozing out of the wood and leaving a puddle. And that's what you're seeing here, is that resin that continued to come out of the wood after it was removed from the vacuum chamber. I did not want that resin in that to plug up my threads, at least not too bad. I'll probably have to run a tap through there anyway. But when I put these in the oven, I made sure they were sitting this way on the aluminum foil because I knew I was going to get something like this on the surface of this wood. What I'll do now is chuck that up in the lathe and I'll polish that down and clean up this surface and that's done. This wood is now essentially a piece of plastic and we'll see how that polishes up. Someone's bound to make a comment about how I don't follow my own instructions for installing these metal inserts. Here we can see that the slot is facing upward and on this one I had the slot facing downward. These particular metal inserts are made a little bit different than ones I've had in the past. This slot only goes to the outside of the base diameter, just to that part. It does not go to the outside of the threads. If we look at some of the older versions that I've had, the slot goes all the way to the outside diameter of the threads. So that slot helps act like a tap to cut the threads and clear the wood chips. It's the same way on the small one. So that slot would offer no assistance as far as cutting the threads for installation. I was using it with this uh, piece of threaded rod, or it's actually a bolt that was cut off. So it didn't make any difference which way I installed it. And I wanted to install these in the wood before I did the resin stabilization, because I was one, I wanted to see if the wood was going to crack when I installed these, which it will sometimes. Once these were installed, that resin is going to help keep that insert in there. It's, uh, it's glued in there pretty tight. I would imagine the only way to remove that insert now would be to break the wood away. They polished up. This is quite smooth. It's like a piece of plastic, but there is some staining in here that is not going to come out. At least when you're polishing this, you know that you're not going to rub through the finish because that finish goes completely through the wood. And on the back side, 
that is polished up pretty well. I also know that water is not going to have any effect on this wood. Doing a vacuum infusion on this is kind of a backwards process with these handles because really vacuum infusion is intended to be used on a piece of raw stock. You infuse the wood with the resin, cure it, and then machine it to the final shape. When you infuse this with the resin, you take it out of the solution. This is soaking wet. It's like a waterlogged piece of driftwood. So when you take it out of the solution, gravity is trying to cause that excess fluid to drip back out of the pores and grain of the wood. And that's why that excess material was caking up on the outside of this when I baked it. So it might be a good idea to take this out of the solution and set it on a paper towel or whatever and, and let the excess material work its way out of there for a little while before you bake it. Or I left this in the vacuum chamber until the last bubbles came out of it and that might be a bit too long. You may not need to leave it in there quite that long. Those are some of the parameters you can play with. The infusion worked a little bit different than I had expected. I halfway expected to be sucking the air out with the vacuum, and then when I released the vacuum, atmospheric pressure would push the resin back into the wood. In reality, it was more of a continuous process. The bubbles were coming out, and the resin was going into the wood at about the same time. When I released the vacuum, I could tell that atmospheric pressure did, in fact, push the resin into the wood a bit more. But it was really more of a continuous process. This is a one-quart bottle. When I started, that liquid level was up to about here, so it took that much to infuse those three knobs. This is a lid for a Magnolite pot. It had a three-piece section that fit in here with a silicone seal that rotated back and forth to open and close the steam port which I don't think was ever really used. The handle had a shaft that extended down from the center and that's what broke when it hit the floor. This had a couple of flaps which keyed into this center section and it's this part that tightened against the stainless to keep the handle from crushing this part. So I needed a center support here. I found a half inch nylon spacer with a 3 16 hole in the center. I drilled this out to a half inch. Actually I reamed it. I had to use a 3 quarter inch long 1032 instead of a 3 8 inch long. Now she has her lid back for her pot. 